This video is an introduction to a post-Keynesian theory linking trade and growth, known as Thurber's Law, which claims that uncompetitive countries may be constrained to low growth rates and high unemployment or underemployment, which cannot be easily addressed by the neoclassical solution of reducing export prices on international markets. This video will go over the basics of the theory. I will explain the mathematics and statistics in later videos. Throughout, it is important to remember that post-Keynesian economics is far from the academic consensus and that, although there is significant empirical evidence and a strong theoretical foundation supporting Thurber's law, it is not widely accepted within mainstream neoclassical economics. I have put a link in the description to an introductory video on post-Keynesian economics made by Rethinking Economics. Three Theoretical Foundations of Thurber's Law Demand-Driven Growth Keynes' original model focused on how temporary slumps in aggregate demand may cause resources to be used at under full capacity, and in particular, cause labour unemployment or underemployment. Later, post-Keynesians, particularly Caldor, expanded this to show how low demand could alter the growth paths of countries in the long run. Here, current demand affects capitalists' expectation of future demand, which drives investment and consequently growth. In this model, most economies run at below full capacity, particularly in developing countries with much of the labour force and low productivity work in the agricultural service sector, who, if demand expanded, could easily be moved to high productivity jobs in manufacturing, which Caldor view as the engine of growth. So, in post-Keynesian growth theory, increasing demand is the most important way to create higher levels of growth. 2. Trade Constrained Demand Keynes developed his theory for a closed economy, and this the major constraint to demand was provided by the financial sector. However, Harold began to develop a theory showing how maintaining balance of trade may create a more severe limitation to demand. Here we assume that countries cannot indefinitely import more in monetary value than they export, because this would increase foreign debt, as domestic households, firms or government borrowed foreign money to finance the excess of imports which are not paid for by exports. Although the exact level of debt ceiling countries may face is not well understood, it is generally accepted that some such ceiling exists. So why does countries' limited ability to import reduce overall demand? The amount of imports in a country normally increases with domestic income because people have more money to spend on imports. So normally, a reduction in income is necessary in order to reduce imports to a level where they match exports. 3. Exports depend on foreign income. For Thurwell, exports can be difficult to expand. The main variables affecting exports are foreign income and the responsiveness of export demand to changes in foreign income. The real exchange rate that is, the difference in prices between goods produced in different countries does not change much, and the consumption patterns are relatively unaffected by any change in relative prices which do occur. Also, the responsiveness of exports to changes in foreign income depends a lot on the quality and type of goods produced, as well as the trade patterns a country has formed. For Thurwell, countries must develop export industries, which grow significantly with foreign income growth. And this is a difficult process, often requiring industrialization, which many heterodox economists would say requires extensive government industrial policy. Thurbel's Law Thurbel's Law is the most common, simple mathematical model used to synthesize and test this combination of theoretical beliefs. However, this set of theories, or a subset thereof, can be mathematized in many other ways. Thurwell's law just happens to be the most convenient and widely used. In this formula, we use growth rates or percentage change rates to describe the growth of domestic and foreign income donated by Y and Y star, and income elasticities to measure the responsiveness of imports and export demand to changes in income. Pi measures the responsiveness of import demand to changes in domestic income and pi star measures the responsiveness of export demand to changes in foreign income. Putting all these terms together gives domestic income growth 
is equal to foreign income growth times the income elasticity of demand for exports over the income elasticity of demand for imports. That's it for today. This was a very short video, just as a prototype, and future videos are likely to be longer. Please like, subscribe, and comment.